to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, verses 18 and 19. And with those powerful words, Jesus reminds us of why we should love the Lord's church. We welcome you today to our study of the Church of Christ. And we hope that you'll have your Bible handy as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study as our sole authority in everything that we do and say. Today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Church of Christ, the Lord's Church in your area. Would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly uh, on Sunday morning or Wednesday or Sunday night. They'd be happy to have you. You'd be an honored guest. And friend, if you've got a Bible question about some of the things you may hear today about the plan of salvation or on any issue, People at the Lord's Church would love to sit down with you and study the Word of God and get to know you better. And friend, we also want to help you here at the Gospel of Christ in your study of God's Word. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com? We have a wide variety of good Bible study material. We've got study questions. We've got written material all of our videos and audio lessons are free and available online at thegospelofchrist.com. Also, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, we make those available to you free of charge. You can go to our website, fill out a media request form, and you can either download those immediately or you can send in a media request and we can send you a hard copy on DVD or CD as well. And friend, in our fast-paced world today, we want to encourage you also to check out our mobile apps, both on the Android and Apple Store. You can download theirs, those. They're free of charge and it's a great way to study the Word of God. Today we're going to be thinking about why Christians should love the Lord's church. And as we think about this idea, we begin with one of the most powerful truths about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's this. We should love the Lord's church because the church belongs to Christ and to Him only. I want you to take your Bible. If you don't have it again, we want to encourage you to locate that. And I want you to take your Bible and look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 11. We love the Lord's church because it belongs to Christ and Him only. Notice 1 Corinthians 3, verse number 11. The Bible says, For no other foundation can anyone lay except that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. What is the foundation? What is it that the, the church is, is built up upon and founded on? Well, friend, no other foundation can anyone lay except Jesus Christ. He is the founder and foundation of the church, and it belongs to Him. And as His bride, Ephesians 5, verse 21 through 31, we ought to love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus promised in Mark 9 verse 1 to His immediate disciples, He said these words, Assuredly I say to you that there are some standing here today who will not taste death until you see the kingdom present with power. To His immediate disciples, Jesus promised they were going to see the kingdom. Jesus promised later, I will build my church. Matthew 16, verse 18. And friend, that church is so wonderful and so powerful and we love it because it belongs to Christ and to Him only. Friend, please hear me well today. 
The Lord's church is not a human institution built by men and wearing the names of or belonging to men. That's contrary to the teaching of the Bible. What makes the church so unique and something that we love? It's pure. It's unadulterated by men and their ideas and their teachings. Paul would say, in 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 through 13, to some who are trying to put the church in the realm of, of human institutions and man-made organizations, Paul said, let there be no divisions among you. And so initially, we love the church because it so beautifully and simply belongs to Christ and Him only. Secondly, we should love the church because our Lord died to establish the church. When you, you think about Jesus on the cross. You think about everything He suffered, the, the horror, the, the, the anguish, the, the agony that He went through. Why did He do that? Well, we understand Jesus did that to make salvation available, to, to, to freely offer salvation to those who would obey Him. But friend, do we also see the Bible teaching that Christ died to establish His church? Would you take your Bible and look with me in Acts chapter 20, verse number 28. I want you to look in your Bible in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Christians love the Lord's church because Jesus died to establish her. The Bible says this, Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which He purchased, listen now, which He purchased with His own blood. As Jesus is on Calvary, on Golgotha, He's hanging in agony on the cross, and as His blood freely and willingly flowed down to, that, to the ground below. Do we realize that that was the purchase price for the church? Why do I love the church? Because my Lord's precious blood was shed to institute, to establish, and to purchase the church that we're a part of. Friend, the church is not an afterthought. The church is not a band-aid waiting for a, 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 a something bigger or better one day. The church is, is not something we should look down on as, why do I need church? I've got Christ. Why do I need a church? No. The church is is big in God's plan. It's big in God's plan in that it's where God intended all the saved to be. Which leads us to the third reason why Christians should love the Lord's church. Friend, we love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because it is the place where all the saved people are. Friend, think about this with me for a moment. We realize the tragedy and how tragic sin is, right? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Well, what happens when I sin and when you sin? The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 The soul who sins shall surely die. Ezekiel 18.4 Sin separates us from a holy and righteous God. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13. If those things are true, and they are, then friend, when I'm saved, wherever I'm saved at, wherever God puts all the saved, that is a beautiful, wonderful place to be that we surely ought to love. Well, where is that place? Would you open your New Testament to Acts chapter 2, and I want you to notice what happens with me in Acts chapter 2. Look in your Bible in the second chapter of the book of Acts. Peter preaches for the very first time Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Acts 2 verse 36. They cry out, they realize that truth, they cry out, men and brethren, what shall we do? And in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Peter tells them to repent and be baptized for the remission of their sins. To those who gladly received His word and were baptized, Acts 2, verse 41 through 43, watch where the Bible says they were placed. Acts 2, look at verse 47. 
praising God and having favor with all the people. Now watch this. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Where did God put the saved? Now listen carefully. Men didn't do this. Nobody's going to vote me in or vote me out of the church. If I obey the gospel, the Lord does the adding and no doubt the Lord does the taking away. But where were all the saved placed? The Lord added to the church those who were saved. Friend, what makes the church a wonderful place? The church, you remember the word church, ecclesia, from our previous lesson, simply means the called out or the assembly. The called out. Called out of what? Called out of a world of sin. Called out of a world that going down the wrong path to death and destruction. We're called out of that. And we're called into the body of the saved. I love the church because, friend, it's where God's saved people are at. Here's another beautiful reason as to why we love the church. We should love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because the church, this is such a powerful principle, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has the power to overcome death, the devil, hell, and sin. I want you to think about the question. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18, Jesus enters into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he says to his disciples, Who do men, what's everybody, who's everybody saying I am? Who do men say that I am? Some said Elijah, Jeremiah, others, uh, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. But Jesus said to his immediate disciples, who knew him, who had seen his miracles, who had walked the land of Galilee with him, Who do you say that I am? And as was often the case, Peter spoke up. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, Well done, good for you, Simon, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, and I say to you that you're Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. Now listen to these words. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Friend, when we think about those words, I want you to listen carefully to that. I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What's that passage teaching us? Well, the idea there of hell carries the idea of Hades is the uh, word there, the Hadean realm. What are we talking about? If someone is a member of the Lord's church, meaning that they did what they were supposed to as followed in Acts chapter 2, they obeyed the gospel, the Lord added them to the church, then death and sin and hell and the devil cannot conquer them. Why do we love the church? Because it's the place. If I'm in the church, then friend, I'm not living in fear of death every day. Why? Because Jesus, through death, overcame him at the power of death and released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. Hebrews 2.14 Jesus defeated the devil. He defeated hell and all its allies and he has allowed us through him to overcome death and to overcome sin. I'm not living in fear of sin. Why? Because those sins have been washed away in the blood of Christ. If anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. And friend, if I'm in Christ, death is a blessing. Notice this passage. Psalm 116 verse 15, the Bible says this, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Let's then turn our attention to another reason why Christians love the Lord's church. Why do we love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Friend, we love the Lord's church because we are the church. Listen carefully now. In the Bible, the church is not an edifice. It is not a building. It is not a location on a street corner. The building may be there. Uh, that's where the church gathers, but the church is not the building. What is the church? The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 27, Paul says to Christians in Corinth, You are the body of Christ 
and members one of another. We love the church because we are and because other Christians are the church. You see, the Bible teaches we're to love one another, right? A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, that you also love one another. John 13, verse 34 and 35. Let brotherly love continue. Hebrews 13, verse 1. And so I know sometimes we may not think about it, but when we have disdain or we don't love the church like we ought to, we're really not loving each other. And according to 1 John chapter 3, about verses 12 through 17, we're really not loving God as we ought to either. And so we love the church because we are, Christians are, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's then mention this last reason why we love the Lord's church today, and then we'll make some practical application to that. Why do we love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? We love the church ultimately because of the eternal reward the Lord's church and all those in it will receive. Would you take your New Testament, and I want you to look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and let's notice the eternal destiny of the church or the kingdom. Remember Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said, I'll build my church, and then in that same breath, He said to Peter, I'm going to give to you the keys of the kingdom. Church and the kingdom are synonymous in the Bible. Watch what's going to happen with the church in the end. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24. The Bible says this, Then comes the end when He, watch this, when He delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when He puts an end to all rule, all authority, and power. What's going to happen to the Lord's church in the end? The church, the kingdom, is going to be hand-delivered to the Father. What's the beautiful idea there? Friend, if I'm in the church, then I am destined for the place the church is going to end up, in the very presence of Almighty God. We're talking about heaven. Don't you want to go to heaven? Jesus said in John 14, verses 1 through 6, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you. And then He said this, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go... I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That beautiful place of rest, Hebrews 4 verse 9, that place that is separated from sin and, and pain and evil and all the problems of this world, Revelation 21 verses 3 and 4. We love the church because, friend, the church is destined to live with God for eternity. Now, with those things being true, Let's then take just a moment and let's make some application to that. Let's say then that a person says, those things are absolutely right from the Scripture and, and we do indeed and we should love the Lord's church. Well, friend, what does it mean if a person then says, I love the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? How does one show his love for the church? Think about these very practical ways that we show our love for the church. First, we show our love to the Lord's church by putting the church first. I want you to take your New Testament and would you look with me to the Gospel of Matthew. In the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6, as Jesus is discussing the problem of anxiety and worry, he tells us how we can remedy all of that. And the answer is by putting the church first. Notice Matthew 6, verse number 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In my priority list, in, in the things that are most important in my life, where does God... And where does the church belong? Well, remember where God belongs, right? What's the first and greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mark chapter 12, verse 27 through 31. But you know, along with loving God, does not the Bible here say we are to seek first 
the kingdom of God and His righteousness. If the kingdom of God is the church, then friend, we, when we say we love the church, we want to put it first. We want it to be at the forefront of our thinking. We want in this life not to get so caught up in the day-to-day -day concerns that we forget what's really important. Secondly, we show our love to the Lord's church by spreading the borders of the kingdom. By evangelizing, by telling someone about the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the first century, Saul was wreaking great havoc on the church in Acts chapter 8 verse 1. And the Bible says in Acts 8 verse 4, Acts 8 verse 4, those who were scattered because of that persecution went everywhere preaching the word. You know, when Jesus was resurrected and right before he's about to go back to the Father... His request for us was this, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28, verse 18. And so if I say I love the church, and we, and we indeed do, then friend, we want to spread the borders of the kingdom. Let's think real practically for a moment. I have friends and neighbors in my life who don't know God. We probably have uh, kinfolk in our life who are not Christians, co-workers who are not what they need to be in God's sight, and yet we hold within our hand the pearl of great price. We know what it takes to become a Christian. We know how good it is to live a life that's pleasing to God. Friend, if I really say that I'm putting God first, if I really say I'm seeking first the kingdom, can I really do that and not tell someone about the good news of Jesus Christ? Seeking first the kingdom means that we tell others about Christ and about His love for us. Let's then think of a third way that we can show our love to the Lord's church, and it's this. We show our love for the church, as we've already mentioned a little bit, by making sure that we love one another. I want you to open to the passage that I mentioned earlier in John chapter 13. And I want you to see what Jesus said to His disciples about loving one another. There had been a lot of problems among the disciples. It looks like at times that they are vying and jockeying for the best position uh, uh, among Jesus' disciples. And Jesus knew that. And thus in John 13, listen to what Jesus said in verse 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this all will know you're, you're my disciples if you have love for one another. How do we show our love for the church? By really loving each other. If someone's hurting, I want to help them. Do unto others as I would have them do unto me. Matthew 7, verse number 12. If someone's happy, we rejoice with them. If they're suffering, we weep with them, according to Romans chapter 12. We have to have that, that family atmosphere, that family idea, where we really are brothers and sisters in Christ, and we show our compassion and love by our actions, by what we do and the way we treat each other. The way we treat each other says a lot about how much we love the church because we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let me mention one last principle by which we can show our genuine love for the Lord's church. We show our love for the Lord's church by not just filling a pew, but by doing something for the Lord. You know, the Bible is not, Christianity is not a religion where I just say something and, and that's all we need. No, James 2 says that's faith without works and that's a dead faith. That won't get anybody to heaven. What do we need to do then? We need to be actively trying to do God's will in our lives. Mark 10 verse 45, Jesus serves as the perfect example of that. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, Paul encourages Christians, be steadfast, immovable. Listen to this. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. When I think about the Lord's church and my love for the church, I want to ask myself, what am I doing for the church? Am I actively involved in doing something for the Lord? Am I getting out and showing my faith by my actions? Not to my glory. Not so that I can think somehow I've earned it. That's not the idea. But am I active in my Christianity? Am I putting my religion into action by living it each and every day? Am I looking for ways to do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith? Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10. And so, friend, as we think today about the Lord's church, our hope and prayer is that you will love the Lord's church and that we'll each live in such a way that our lives, show our love and commitment to the Lord and His church. But today, maybe you're not a member of that church. Friend, we want you to know two things today. We want you to know that the God of heaven loves you deeply. God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2, verse number 4. And friend, we want you to know as well that Christians and here at the gospel of Christ, We want you to be saved. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, the church that you read about in the Bible, friend, we urge you today to become one. Have you heard the great message about Jesus? You'll call His name Jesus. He'll save His people from their sins. Do you believe with all your heart that He's the Savior of the world? John 8 verse 24. Would you turn from a life of sin and turn to God in repentance? Acts 3 verse 19 having confessed the beautiful name of Jesus before men, would you do what Jesus said to be saved? The Lord said this, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, 16. And friend, having done that, you can know the Lord's added you to His church, which we hope and pray every one of us will love each and every day. May God bless us and join us next time as we study His Word together. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as video and audio from our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. You can also reach us by emailing mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call us at 844-6-GOSPEL or write to us at the address on your screen. You can also get our Gospel of Christ app on your handheld devices for those on the go. Gospel of Christ.